Welcome back to The Daily Factor. Well, we're dedicating a longer section to our sports update. There are now eight teams left in the European Championships with the quarterfinals taking place this weekend. Spain against Switzerland, Belgium versus Italy, Denmark versus the Czech Republic, and England versus Ukraine. So let me welcome my guests who are going to be discussing this and the shenanigans that, hap that are currently happening with France. Let me welcome two freelance sports journalists, Len Muneko and Kuliso Nemarimela. Len and Kuliso, good afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Afternoon to you, Faraz. All right, Hello, Len. Len. I'm going to yeah. start off with you, Len. What on earth yeah. is happening in France? One mother's complaining about another player. It's just a battle of the parents, isn't it? it? It's sort of like a repeat of 2010 when Raymond Domenech brought France here and all hell broke loose. Yeah, and, and that's a funny thing about it because it now makes one Didier Deschamps look like he does not have a hold of his team because you've got the parents fighting about Mbappe being too selfish. You've got a parent ironically, the same parent who's also fighting about uh, Pogba losing the ball and as a result, the second ball, or rather the, the equalizer happening for Switzerland. And this is not a place for parents to be. Uh, yes, you can be a parent as an agent, but it did not be the kind of media attention that you need as a French team that come into a Euro as world champions and you are also touted as the favorites to win this competition. And this is the kind of publicity that you get post you crashing out of the competition. And it looks so bad because the same mother is alleged to have had some issues with the owners at PSG. And as a result, that's why we know that Rabio is no more a PSG player is now at, 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 at Juve. So it's where does parenting come in? This is not a high school rugby or soccer match where parents will come in and tell the coach what to do or tell the players what to do it's unto the players they are matured enough they know what to do and on the point of mbappe we know that mbappe has a certain demeanor about him he showed it in the final of the champions league when they lost against bayern he showed it in the semi-final of the champions league when they lost against man city it's just the kind of character he is that is how he's able to deal with emotions. So for you, as a mother, to say that the world was, or the world in this case being France, was on Mbappe's shoulders and he needed to deliver the same way that your child did not deliver is rudely unfair. And I think to actually show that the game is beyond Rabio and Rabio's mother, if I was Didier Deschamps, I would never pick Rabiot for any French game going forward. Coliso, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree because we've seen Rabiot's attitude when he was called up to the preliminary squad of the World Cup. He just flatly refused to join it. Yeah, um, maybe that could have been because we knew that uh, Blaise Matuidi was still in the squad. Um, of, because of other issues as well. But um, I think it is embarrassing, if anything, honestly, for us to be, um, for us to be us, even being here talking about this issue. Um, you know what I mean? We should be talking about real agents, man. We should be talking about transfers. We should be talking about the football um, that's going to happen tonight and tomorrow evening, you know. But here we are talking about um, <laughs> mother squirrels. Uh, or whatever whatever it is going on between um, all, all all the mothers. I mean, I got a glimpse of the story about what, what what's happening, you know, and um, someone's mother is saying this, Pogba's mother is saying that, and stuff like that. You know, when when we're talking about uh, Pogba issue, um, and this agent comes comes through, and you hear that he's trying to get him to go to Juventus or Inter Milan or whatever the case might be, we want to hear those kind of stories. But now, if we um, if it is the mothers, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different thing. And what this shows you now, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about um, Didier Deschamps' uh, tactics, you know, and, and whether he's supposed to be uh, the French manager at, the, at this time, you know, whether maybe now it's time to bring Zizo in because we know that he's unemployed and stuff like that. 
Um, a lot of people were saying, oh, okay, maybe give him another chance. He's won the World Cup as a player and now as a coach as well. Um, but this now, the fact that it looks like he cannot keep, he cannot um, leash, he cannot put anyone on a leash. Uh, you know, I know it's not really his job to be putting the mothers on a leash, you know, but they, at least he should, there should be some authority um, coming from probably the FA, uh, the French FA or the FFF, as well as uh, Duchamp himself, um, to the players and obviously ultimately to, to the mothers as well and say, we, okay, cool. The tournament did not go as well as it did, um, but we should be trying by all means now to find a way forward. It, it really is petty mm. politics that I'm not, I, for one, am not really interested yeah, in. Yeah, all, all they can do is have a nice ladies' tea evening and they can sort this out by themselves. Let's go to the football, guys. Spain versus Switzerland. Len, uh, Spain weren't convincing in that first two group games. They came, put five plus Slovakia. And probably one of the games of the competition, a 5 3 win over Croatia. Surely Switzerland aren't going to do a repeat against Spain. You would have probably said the same thing when they played France. Unless if you didn't know that the mothers were involved. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of that, um, it's, it's what I've noticed about these Euros. One, they are proving that football is not what we think it to be. Um, a lot of results go in the way that we don't think they're going to go. And personally, from seeing Spain in the first game, I never gave them a chance to even get in as far as they got to. But they've managed to scrape through. They've managed to get to where they're getting through. But I think with uh, Luis Enrique, I don't think he's got a solid team that he knows how to utilize. Um, you've got the likes of Alvaro Morata, uh, Ferran Torres. How much have they offered you? Morata comes in bits and pieces. And we've known this about Morata from his days at Chelsea. Um, at Juventus, he came in, but there were so many other assisting elements. But you look at the Spanish team now. Tell me who is one of the game winners. They don't really have that. And... In, 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 in versing them, if I can put it that way, to a Switzerland where you know a Shakiri just needs the edge of the box to the side and then he can curl one in. You know that Shaka, hardworking midfielder, and he showed that he can graft against, um, against, against, against France. Does Spain really have that element to actually neutralize all those elements of individual brilliance mm. that Switzerland have, but also do they have the hard work to work as hard as Switzerland do? Switzerland were 3-1 down with barely 15 minutes to go, but they never had a give up spirit. They thought, ah, 15 minutes, we can probably slot two goals in. They did. And it went as far as them going as far as actually winning the game. So it's a case of, for me, Spain has not been that convincing in this tournament. And for me, Switzerland have shown that hard work really does bear fruits. And that is why they find themselves as far as they are. If I can just add... Mm. Uh, yeah, for, sure. For, 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 to, to, to what Len is saying there, um, I mean... <sighs> When when I look when I look at this Spain team now, um, under Enrique, uh, I, I rate him as a coach, um, but it reminds me uh, it's got uh, glimpses. For us, you will know this. Uh, it's got glimpses of his Roma team. Mm. Um, you could you can see what he's trying to do. Um, you know what I mean. But it looks like he just does not have the material to do. Um, whatever he wants to do. Um, you look at that midfield, it's all over the place. At, at least now, when they, go, when they got uh, Bosquet back in the last game, it looked like there was some um, stability in the midfield. Um, you know what I mean? But just to echo what Len was saying, I do not see how Spain can win that game, but I do see them winning it. Yeah, of course. I mean, in Barcelona, Luis Enrique, <laughs> Neymar, Luis Suarez and Lionel Messi. And we all exactly. know what happened in that 2014-15 season. Kuliso, the other big one. I'm sure we're all looking forward to it. Belgium versus Italy. This is huge, isn't it? Roberto Mancini is doing wonders with the Azzurri. 
We know what Roberto Martinez is doing with Belgium. The pressure is on the Belgian Red Devils to win the first piece of major silverware. How do you see this one going? It, it, for me, it's the biggest stumbling block. Um, because when you, when you look at the Belgian side, uh, their very first game, I think it was against Hungary, and they only scored, I think they, they scored by the 88, 83rd minute, I can't remember. Um, but what, 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 what this Belgian side looks like, I know it was in Hungary, uh, but what this Belgian side looks like they do not have, they can't deal with a low block. And you and I know there is no one that does a low block better than Italian mm. teams. I do know that this Italian team now at the moment um, they are a bit ambitious. They go forward. They are not your typical uh, Italian team, but they are also not an easily. Uh, they don't concede that easily. Um, so I'm sure Mancini, being um, that invested in Italian for football for as long as he has, he will be able to know that. Hey, listen, we just need to do a couple of things to gear in there, and then we neutralize Lukaku and Kevin De Bruyne, who I don't think uh, might be ready. I was listening to. Uh, to Martinez earlier today saying that uh, Kevin De Bruyne as well as Eden Hazard are on individual training programs, which is always a worry, especially if you're playing um, knockout competition football, because now he needs them um, to go out there and, 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 and deliver to Lukaku, because you're not going to start a match against Italy looking for answers from Nasa Chadli uh, or, or your Telemans, who I rate very well, by the way, but I don't think this is the stage for him as yet um so my, 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 my the italians are overwhelming favorites for me going into this one um considering the fact that they they know how to plan um for a particular opponent when you look at martinez it's just he's got a blanket approach to games mm. and um sometimes in knockout football or in football in general what you need um you need a manager that can look at a side and say you know what this side they play one two three let's go with a low block and let's capitalize on neutralizing Kevin De Bruyne or Eden Hazard if they do start. If they don't start, then they only have to take care um, to take care of Lukaku. And you know, uh, the big old Italian centre-backs, will be, they will be excited for the challenge uh, to come up with Lukaku, considering what he did um, to, to them during the season, the whole season. Len, England versus Ukraine. We saw the scenes on Tuesday. We saw the poetry of Peter Drury when Sterling and Harry Kane scored. They've got an easy route to the final. They've got Ukraine tomorrow in Rome. Surely Ukraine can't do the impossible. Easy, you say? Um, well, well I'm assuming I don't it seems easy. It seems easy. But surely Ukraine can't do what Iceland did in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Irony that you mentioned that yeah. Iceland actually did something in 2016. I, I don't think Ukraine got to where they got to by saying pretty please. Um, you saw their game um, against Sweden. You had moments where you thought that Sweden were actually going to take this. And you had moments of individual brilliance from the Ukrainians. But however, they manage their game very well, especially in extra time, whereby even though they were playing with a Sweden team that was a man down, they were not, too, they were not being too ambitious, but they stuck to a plan of them saying, maybe if we take this to penalties, we might have more of a chance, but we'll still go and attack when the chances present themselves. However, with England, Here's the problem. You've got too many individual stars. Mm. And I say stars in inverted commas because with the exception of Harry Kane, which of the England players are actually stars in the individual teams that they play for? I can go to a Jordan Sancho who's barely seen minutes. Um, I can go to... Well, with the exception of Saka as well, because he carried Arsenal for the majority of the previous season. And when him and Jack Grealish actually came on the pitch, you see a different dimension to the English team. However, it seems like Gareth Southgate always wants to start a match on a more cautious approach. But Ukraine is not like that. And if your fullbacks as England are not a 
at work on the day, Ukraine will hurt you. And you've got a Zinchenko who's not playing in a conventional position that he does for Manchester City. He's more, he's sitting more on a, mm. a taking, if I can put it like that, uh, position. And he's able to go and try to find those spaces and be an extra element of attack, which he does as well for Man City. We know he played a game of his life for Manchester City against PSG in the Champions League semi-final and the second leg, rather. He was actually one of the standout players. But for England, for me, in these Euros, the only standout player literally has been Saka, who came in for like a game or two, Jack Grealish, who also came in for like a game or two, and Sterling, who's been their primary goal scorer. Neutralize those, then what do you have for England? Unfortunately, England, for me, like in so many tournaments, I don't see them being the Portugal of 2016 mm. because they do not have that person who carries the team. They've got a lot of individuals who try to carry the team. And at the point when that individual tries to carry the team, that's when that elusive substitution happens from Gareth Southgate. And that's where you throw it, that's where you throw it away. They got they got extremely lucky. Uh, mm. I feel they got extremely lucky by winning the game that they won against Germany because they were playing against the subpar Germany team. Germany was also coming in bits and pieces, and yes, they were able to beat Portugal, but they put their heads down. And unfortunately, in this game, it's a knockout. You don't have a next round for you to be able to sort of like sort out whatever problems you have. In this one, I honestly see Ukraine because they are hard workers. And I'm, 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 I'm keeping on the narrative of hard workers because it looks like the harder you work, the more you get results in these Euros because the teams with the stars, no pun intended, yeah. the majority of them are gone. Yeah. Well, guys, I, I've literally got... Just a few seconds to, to get your predictions. Len, I'm going to start with you. Spain, Switzerland? I'm going for Switzerland. Okay. Yeah, Belgium, Italy? I'm going for Italy. Uh, Czech Republic, Denmark? I'm going for the date. All okay, right. And then you've just said Ukraine? I'm sticking you Ukraine to be England. Right. I'm holding you onto that. Kuliso, to you. Uh, Switzerland, Spain? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go the, the separate way. Uh, I'm gonna go Spain for that one. Belgium, Italy. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Italians. All right. Uh, Czech Republic, Denmark. I think Denmark still have that emotional push, so they'll do it. All right. And England, Ukraine. I have a sneaky feeling about Ukraine and Shevchenko. Look at uh, that. But I think England will have enough. I Look at if England Ukraine will. have to beat England, my word. Boris Johnson may just lose all of his hair. Gentlemen, Kuliso, <laughs> Len, I say thank you so much for making the time for us. We really appreciate thank it. You, we shall speak soon in a future time. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Len Muleko, Kuliso and Marimela, previewing you as the quarterfinals of the European Championship.